RGTV. 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 What's up, y'all? This is Mr. West, aka DJ Busybody, and I'm doing this interview with RGTV and the Hizzy for Shizzy. Hey, everybody, this is Amplify. I'm doing an interview with RGTV today. Let's go. So, I've been asked this question a couple of times. People ask me, who is Mr. West? Let me break this down to you. Me, personally, as a person and a DJ, I'm about the same person, all right? I get along with everybody. Mr. West is somebody that you can come up to and talk about, say, yo, what's up? I heard you on the radio. I'm like, yo, yo I appreciate the love, this, that, and third. Or you can see me in the mall or wherever. I'm just somebody that, if you're black, white, Puerto Rican, Asian, somebody that's somebody you can relate to in any way, shape, or form. Who is DJ? This is a 23-year-old uh, DJ from Columbus, small town, Nebraska. Not a lot going on there, so thought I'd move up to Omaha. As informant, I am an open format DJ. You can put me in a bar mitzvah, you can put me in a wedding, you can put me on a cruise ship, and anywhere I'm at, I'm gonna succeed in the event that I'm doing. I'm gonna make sure everybody is dancing up there to dance. If they're there for me to be entertaining, I'm just talking on the microphone, having fun with the crowd. I'm gonna do that. I am an all around entertainer in all aspects of what I do. I don't do open format. I typically have my songs uh, in a set list, in order. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I veer away from that, uh, trouble usually. I usually play what I want to play first and if the crowd's not feeling it, you know, I'll, I'll definitely play some music they want to hear. I feel like my ears and their ears go pretty well together, so. I've been a turntablist for about five years, which, and a turntablist meaning I own a set of turntables. Uh, I've been a DJ for about 13 years all together, 13 years. I started real young, dad was a DJ, so kind of just broke myself into it. You know. <laughs> uh, I've been DJing for almost eight years. Yeah, 2008. Yep, 2008. Right after high school. So, uh, when I was a young star, I was um, in sixth grade. My little sister was a Girl Scout, and they had this thing called the, um, the Father Daughter Dance, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's when the dads took their daughters to a dance because, you know, the dads are one of the Girl Scouts that pay for all the stuff and the moms just show up and eat cake and pie cookies. Anyways, so, the DJs they had one year bailed out and they asked my dad to do it. And he's like, well, my, my dad went and bought some equipment and, you know, started working around the house with some equipment and some uh, music that he already had. And uh, I was just watching him and, uh, yeah, I thought it was cool. When I was growing up, my dad always blast loud music. So it was nothing new really to me. I just, he just had other pieces of equipment I'd never seen. As, uh, as the day approached, he was like, you know, I got a date that night, so I'm gonna need you to DJ. I was like, DJ what? <laughs> it's like, and so uh, he, put, he put me on it. He, he was like, yeah, you know what? We're gonna bring some house speakers. I've got a five disc CD player and a DVD player from the house. He brought that, showed up to the event, man, and I had that, I will never forget that feeling of being able to make people dance by playing music. Granted, they're just Girl Scouts, you know, I, I was in sixth grade, so I mean, it wasn't like it was illegal or something, but like, <laughs> I was just like, wow, dude, this is this is crazy, this is a great feeling. I am getting paid to play loud music and talk on the microphone and interact with people, so I was like, yes, I want a DJ. Being honest, Skrillex, when he did the change from, uh, from post-rock to electronic, I just, I followed suit, and uh, pretty much started producing electronic music. Uh, same time he did, well, about a year after. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say from when I started till now because uh, I used to DJ retirement parties pretty much. So <laughs> uh, but I would say from when I started playing in, uh, you know, the club scene and started, you know, really interacting with, you know, business owners and stuff like that, being coming resident DJs at different places. Back then, it was who had the most friends. If you had the most friends you were the best DJ in town because your friends come out and love you because you're playing music for them and it's music that you guys all know. So why wouldn't they want to come out and the club owner's like, hey, I don't care if he farts in the microphone. As long as they're dancing, hey, I'm, I'm cool with them buying alcohol at my place. Nowadays, DJing is not even, I don't want to say it's not DJing anymore because I was talking to a gentleman the other day at the Apple store and um, he asked what I do for a living. I was like, oh, I DJ. He's like, oh yeah, me too. And I'm like, oh, really? How long have you been DJing? He's like, well, uh, after I got done with my um, training at Apple, I went and bought um, some DJ software and uh, I played with it on the airplane. I'm like, you just called yourself a DJ, bro. You, you DJ on the airplane? That, that was your first gig, DJ on an airplane on your headphones, on a laptop? He was like, 
and I didn't say that, but that's me thinking in my head now. And so, like, nowadays, to be a DJ, all you got to do is have some music, man. You didn't got to have friends anymore, because there's bars that are like, you know, we just need something better than a jukebox. The word DJ has definitely been diluted, if you so. But, um... It doesn't. I doesn't. I don't really. I don't really go after people that are like you know claim to be DJs. I because I'm here to do my thing as long as and they're there to do their thing. That's how I look at it. Kind of surreal, honestly. Um, it's been a ride, that's for sure. Uh, you know, playing playing for five people for five, ten, five, six years, and then finally getting to play for you know five, six, ten thousand people. Uh, it's it's a little bit surreal. It's a little bit surreal, to say the least. So. I have been influenced in all aspects of my career. Uh, obviously, my dad being my biggest influence, because you know he's the one that brought the whole rug onto me. Musically, I would say B.O.B. is my biz biggest music influence, because he's such a talented man. He's worked with everybody from East Coast to West Coast, in, but yet he's still somebody you can sit down with at a Burger King and eat a cheeseburger and some french fries and have a regular conversation and not feel like you're talking to somebody Hollywood. But granted, he really is, though. I would say DJ-wise, starting out, my first real encounter with a DJ, I was like, yo, that DJ is dope. Would uh, be pre Young Johnny out of Des Moines. Super dope, cool guy, man. And uh, this was back when I was just playing on my laptop. I, I didn't know what CDJs and turntables were. And then I came over and saw this guy doing all this stuff on his like, What is that noise and why does it sound so good? And how do I learn how to make it? So, uh, pre Young Johnny. And then um, as a DJ, you know, you get influenced by a lot of other DJs, like, especially when you're grown. Because, you know, you, like, you'll take different aspects of different DJs and you try to incorporate them into your show to make it your show. And so, uh, after Pretty Young Johnny, um, I met Hot Boy from a radio station. And uh, I loved his personality. Loved his personality on the turntables, loved his personality on the microphone. When um, we were coming up as DJs, a lot of club owners and bar owners didn't really want urban DJs in the club because they figured the crowd we were going to bring was going to be a crowd that would come and destroy their night or whatever. So, when I met Hot Boy, and he's, they're letting this guy play all these places that I want to play in. He's the same color as me. Why, why can't I get in there? Come on, man. And so I was like, yo, that's dope. I want to be this guy or whatever, you know? Um, okay, so most of my influences uh, would be on the Ausla crew, which is Skrillex's label right now. Uh, they have an artist signed such as Ghastly, uh, you know, uh, Galantis, uh, Snails, uh, pretty much all my favorite artists right now. Um, so I get a lot of my inspiration from the Ausla team. Travis Black and Brent Rec Effect were two of my biggest uh, contributors to getting into this scene. And uh, Trill Farrell, I think they go by Gummy now. That's uh, Nick Hyde, Danny Kanick. They got me my first show here in Omaha about eight years ago at Raven Night. My future as a DJ, my ultimate goal as a DJ is to be an on-stage uh, DJ for a major artist. So like, this is gonna sound bad, but Justin Bieber. Not the guy that I would pick, but I'm just saying, but like an on-stage DJ for a major artist, Justin Bieber. Usher, I wouldn't do Young Thug, that's not really my thing. But, um, you know, some somebody like that, to be out there with the crowd and to be that guy that is, you're basically the, the artist's backup. Without you, what is it? The band's dope, but the band's not, the drummer's not gonna get on the microphone and get the crowd hyped for the artist to come out to the stage. The band might hold it down during intermission, but, you know, that, you're, you're the guy that they're going to, you know? Right. And so I, I feel like that would be, that's Miley's final, my, that would be my last and final milestone at my career as DJ is to be a DJ for a major artist. Definitely Vegas, resident DJ for sure, 100%. All right, so, uh, if you wanna hear me just regular, cause you like my voice, hey baby. Uh, I work Power 106.9, that's a radio station here in Omaha. Um, you can download the app, Power 106.9 FM, not .com, that's the website, but whatever. Uh, you can download that and I work seven till midnight every single night, run a whole show by myself. It's a whole lot of fun. I uh, interact with the listeners, taking shout outs, and you know, I've got a section I do speak on it. Let's do it one, two, a whole lot of stuff. Uh, social media wise, um, you can look me up by my personal name if you'd like. Uh, pretty wild on Facebook. Um, Tay Westbury. Uh, you can look me up on my DJ page, Mr. West. That is M R West. Snapchat, I am Mr. West 402, M I S T E R West 402. Mm -hmm. And then um, Instagram, same thing, Mr. West 402. You can find me almost any social media at Mr. West 402. Keep it real, baby. Um, well, I'm not on Spotify yet, but uh, soundcloud.com slash amplify, F-L-Y, fly. And um, where else? YouTube. I got a couple YouTube videos. Um, 
But yeah, SoundCloud is my main. SoundCloud.